Uh, Swipsk is actually like a duo, and Swipsk Quartet is like our band here. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, we are a band. We're just Swipsk Quartet, and we are also a band called Swipsk. It's, it's like that. Yeah. It is the same thing, but the uh, economy and uh, all these kind of things sometimes decides what's Depends happening. Depends on the stage. You know, some some places are suited for two people, or have only economy for two people, and some have for four. And, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, we also, sometimes we also play trio, like a trio, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What can you do? We just create music together. So when, when did you start as a as a duo trio quartet? <laughs> as well, the, the, the solo. <laughs> the solo. Yeah. So we started out in uh, 2003 as a duo, and it was quite um, yeah, it was quite a long time we played as a duo. We made the first CD as a duo, and then uh, when we made the second CD in 2009, we decided that we wanted to to uh, to make different music well to make different arrangements stuff like that so we invited a piano player and a percussion player and this is how the oh we actually played with a percussion player a long time before but never mind but then we just were so happy with this sound of the piano and the percussion and then we found Simon and Thais and and harmony was was made was yeah. fulfilled Usually one sort of composer tune and then we work on the arrangement and chords and change uh, bits and pieces. And one tune can take maybe six months until it's from start till finish. And every time we pick it up we get new ideas and in the end it's there. Sometimes there's a tune you know that you make and uh, make it on a CD and you never play it live. <laughs> but it's 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 a wonderful wonderful work to uh, to find the the way of playing things. And we, yeah, we, we help each other a lot there. I think for us, uh, when we play the tradition of folk music, it's like uh, the folk music is made for dancing. And when you put it on stage, you have to do something else to get this atmosphere of dancing uh, out to the audience. And um, for us, it was very it was good to meet Thais and Simon because they add something different uh, to the music. And uh, the way we play it, I think we for us, it's it, we create the music the way we want to do because we have the energy of dancing. And, and and but we have the music that still can be played on the stage and not be boring because if you just hear music played for dancing on stage, it gets boring because there's a missing connection with the dancers. So when we play for dance and we love to play for dance, we play different. We just play the tunes like like so we can play for the dancers. So it's it's a, yeah, it's another way of thinking when you play it on the stage. But for example, the last tune we played in the set, if you play that for dancers, that will take 20 minutes to complete. And you can't do that for a concert. People would like walk yeah, out in the bar or whatever. <laughs> and table would be a little over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very fast. Yeah. Yeah. You also tend to try to involve the, the audience in your music. Is that by dancing or also in, in, in other ways? It's, yeah, we. Yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, We've been doing that a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, um, we have some some uh, tunes where where we in, invite the audience to dance along with us, doing some chain dances and stuff like that. But that's our job, you know. That's yeah. our main job. We see the, we we often talk about playing music. It's like a mission sent out to open the the minds and the hearts and the spirits of uh, our your audience. And uh, yeah. is that also why you're playing schools? Well, that's what you learn when you play in schools, because uh, when you come to a school and often uh, maybe the kids sit like this and say, folk music, oh my God, if they're big kids, small kids, they don't know about these things. And then you have to kind of uh, make them uh, relax and even open up and smile, wow, and sing and maybe dance. So. And it works. It does always yeah. with we folk music. We found out that um, every concert is different. And it depends of the concert. It, oh, sorry, it depends of the audience because you have to work with the energy that's in the audience and, and in the, the and the energy that's between the musicians. So all concerts are different, and that's that's because of the energy between the musician and the audience. And sometimes the audience like give a lot, and sometimes they don't give, and you have to work with this energy all the time. But that's what makes it very interesting to be in this. Uh, this changing, how do you say this? Um, exchange. Of, exchange yeah. energies all the time. Yeah. Most fiddle players wouldn't call themselves a violinist. Do you feel there's a, a specific difference between playing the violin or playing the fiddle, or is it just well? That's how you call it. 
I thought a lot about it just for the interest of the, the, the words because you know there is fiddle and violin and in Danish there is fiol or fiddle and violin so it's funny that many geige in German it's geige and violine I don't know in Dutch do you have this in Dutch? No in Dutch I think we just say viol viol yeah. but it's uh, to me it's not a difference I mean I would not play in a different violin if I play something more classical or, or folk but I only play folk so I don't maybe that's why <laughs> but I, I really like to play uh, like classical technique stuff and so I, I know I don't see a difference but I feel that I'm a fiddler and it's a, for me it's also a funny thing if you try to um, take the word in, in Danish for a, for a spillerman do you know what spillerman is in Dutch it's a guy who plays folk music for dancing a spillerman if you want to translate that into English it's a, you cannot find the word except fiddler I feel very much like a fiddler. Yes. You know, when you play for, for dancing, you play, uh, which we call it Polish music. It's like music that's used for something. And sometimes, uh, more and more, it's, it's uh, necessary in the churches to, to, like, when we play a concert, we get close to people, like we were talking about before. And that's very good in the churches also, to get close. And, and sometimes the organ is a bit uh, far away and a bit loud and stuff like that. So when we play for a, for a church ceremony, a mass, uh, we can play this, the, the music for singing and uh, we, we play also concert in the mass. And then it works very well because we get close to the, to the, to the people. I often work together with a priest and we're talking about that sometimes if you want to get in this feeling, getting connected with um, the spiritual thing. It's sometimes easier to do it by music, with music than with words. So that's why I think we use quite often. Uh, so we have uh, how to say this uh, cooperation Where, with the priest, and we choose the uh, uh, stemming, the, stem the, the atmosphere that she wants to to use and want to create. It's very interesting to do this work as well. But it's still basically the same choose as we do tonight. We just pick the ones that sort of match the atmosphere. Yeah. The and the funny thing is, because we're playing so many school concerts, if you want to get up, if you want to. Um, to create these feelings with kids, you really have to use everything you have, and you have to use a lot of things. And we found out that we have to take the same thing and put into the concerts for the grown-ups, because that that is one of the way that we can create this uh, feeling of happiness and yeah for the music. And so it's a really good way to learn to play. Yeah. Yeah. Just playing for kids. Yeah. The thing is, with kids, you see instantly if they're bored, then they start running around. Or, yeah. and I, but adults are just more well behaved. Maybe they're bored, but they don't run around. <laughs> so, <laughs> you need to do the same things. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.